Good morning from the venue of the chess.com Isle of Man International and this is such a magnificent playing hall. Um, the camera angle is a bit wider today so you can see behind me a um, beautiful balcony that stretches all around this theatre and um, outside the playing hall you can actually see photos of stars that have performed here in the past including one of my musical heroes Robert Plant. Do check out my Twitter feed at Daniel King Chess if you want to see a photo of that photo. So here's my round six game of the day between Rinat Jumabayev from Kazakhstan and Maxime Vachelagrave from France and this was a tremendous struggle. Both players playing really ambitiously and there are there are sacrifices and you know typical open struggle. It, it, I hope you enjoy this. So Jumabayev with white and it starts out as though we're going to get um, Maxime Vachelagrave's favourite Grunfeld after knight c3 and then d5. But Jumabayev wants to avoid that. Of course Maxime is an incredible theoretical openings expert. So Jumabayev avoids that with this quite trendy line actually. Basically because white isn't playing c knight c3 then well black can play d5 but it allows white to establish a, a big center like this. So uh, Maxime just castled here. So basically we're going into a, a kind of King's Indian where white has played with e3 and of course black can play knight d7 and so on but I mean these these lines are very well known usually with colors reversed actually but Maxime played bishop f5 pretty quickly he's actually played this earlier in the year against Ding Li Ren and Ding played castles there and well it was a very tense game um, in this game uh, Jumabayev played the knight to d2. Very interesting move. Basically taking control over the e4 square and white is going to push forward with e4. Um, for example, in this position, well, in fact, this happens. After e5, d5, white wants to move forward with e4 and basically transpose into a king's Indian where well, it's hard to count the tempi exactly, but I think I think White is doing pretty well there. Um, so Maxime just played pawn to e4, and already this really turns into into a very tense game. Now, if Black can hold this pawn on e4, then this can be a really nice spearhead for an attack. The knight will follow up potentially to e5, maybe to c5 to support the pawn with, with perhaps supported by a5. And then, you know, the way is clear for, to, to attack on the king side. And of course, that bishop is magnificently placed on the long diagonal. But there is a snag to playing with e4, and that is the e pawn is vulnerable. And Jumabayev basically takes up the challenge. In order to take that pawn, you have to play g4. Now, this was, uh, of course, anticipated by uh, Vachel Grave, and he put the bishop all the way back to its starting square. It could go back to d7, but he put it back on c8. Now, white can take that pawn immediately, but then black gets compensation like this, opening up the f file very quickly and potentially the, the queen coming up to h4. That's a very dangerous position. Um, Jumabayev plays it in a slightly different way with g5 first and the knight went back to d7. That's why um, the bishop was put on c8. Then he took the pawn. I mean, at uh, first glance, this looks just fantastic for white. But actually, again, after this move f5, then the f file opens and it's a, a really um, double-edged situation. So if the knight retreats, then obviously queen takes pawn and black is fine. So pawn takes pawn en passant. 
And, well, if the knight were to be taken here, then that brings the, the queen into the game. So the knight retreats. So, basically, for a pawn, black has pressure down the f-file. These diagonals are open, and crucially, white's king does not have a safe place to go to on the king's side. Particularly after bishop h3, preventing castling. But, it, but it's not just the king side that is potentially a problem for white. This bishop stands absolutely beautifully on the long diagonal. So the queen side probably isn't going to be a safe home for the king either. So this is basically sets the character of the game. Pawn advances with e4. Well, it looks very impressive, but actually, you know, black's development is very quick. And yeah, because the king is in the middle, white can't coordinate very easily. Now here's an interesting moment. Um, bishop g5 would seem to tempt the move h6 and, and Maxime declined to play h6, but he could have done actually. Um, I mean it looks as though these two pawns on g6 and h6 are a little bit vulnerable, but actually after h5 this could be quite promising for black because in some situations it might be nice to push the knight away and after bishop g5 then the queen steps aside here so out of the pin and then simply drive the bishop away with knight h7 and again h4 is potentially uh, an option so in fact that would have been uh, quite a nice way for black to to get the initiative instead um, c6 came from Vachelagot Queen d2, so white developing and queen a5. And yeah, as I said before, if white's king were to go to the queen side, it's probably a case of out of the frying pan and into the fire because the king would still be under severe pressure there down the c-file on the long diagonal. So for the moment, Jumabayev just supports the center with f3. So there's no way in for for black at the moment. White is holding firm. Knight e5. It looks very threatening um, and it's kind of tempting for white to move forward with f4 but actually that would allow the knight in. Um, it's, it's interesting this bishop plays a very important role in the game. Prevents the h-pawn moving. Uh, obviously prevented casting but and sometimes it can sneak in with bishop g2, but yeah, f4 would certainly allow black's pieces into the game. So rook g1 looks very sensible to avoid any problems with bishop g2, of course. And Vashilagrav took. Now, of course, white would desperately like to exchange queens here to relieve the pressure, but in fact, that's not possible because black would win the pawn on f3 with a very promising game, actually. With those beautiful bishops. So c takes d5 and rook c8 looks very natural, putting the rook on the open file. It's very threatening. Um, White's basic problem here is that, yep, the king, and if the king is in the middle, then the rooks are split. That's a crime in my books. So knight d1, again, Jumabayev uh, would very much like to exchange queens to relieve some of the pressure. So uh, Vachelagrav avoids that with queen a4. And knight c3. So looks like they're uh, repeating the position here. Um, funnily enough, if we just go back... Sorry, I missed one thing out here. Uh, because actually there is a fantastic idea here for black. Now I don't know whether Maxime simply didn't consider this move, um, who knows, but he could have played instead of queen a4, queen a6. Now this is an extraordinary idea. If bishop takes queen, knight takes pawn check, king steps up. Now if we recapture the queen then uh, black has simply lost material, but we take the rook with check king has to stagger up the board and simply knight d7. Now let me see if I do a material count we can see that black has a rook for the queen <laughs> but 
tremendous potential for attack here. Knight c5, knight e5, potentially a rook coming down the f-file. That is just, it's probably murderous actually. So white should not take the queen. But let's say white just waits and, and plays bishop b3. Well, the idea is simply knight c4. And when this is captured, well, black's initiative continues. I mean, it's not winning by any stretch, but this is a decent way for black to play the position on. So if we go back here, instead Maxime went for knight, uh, queen a4. Um, and here he found himself a bit stuck because white was happy to repeat the position. Now, you know, queen b4, queen a5, they'll lead to a, a draw by repetition. But Maxime wanted more. He played the queen back to d7. Well, and why not, actually? Because black is very well coordinated and white, you know, certainly has all the problems from before about what to do with this position. But actually, Jumba Bayev played very well here. First of all, bishop h6 to trade off that dangerous bishop on g7. Uh, for example, if black now plays knight c4, wanting to get things going on the c-file, then actually, in this case, after the exchange on g7 and the king just edges into the corner with king b1, then things are starting, starting to turn in white's favour. So this is a very important moment, and this next move of Vachier Le Graves is really impressive. He played b5. Now this takes great imagination, great creativity. He realised that playing the, the kind of standard move, knight c4, would actually mean that his initiative was would slowly die out. So what does he do? He just throws another pawn onto the fire. Bishop's exchanged and now the pawn is taken with knight b5. Of course if the pawn is left then pawn would advance to b4 and, and black is starting to get somewhere. So this is taken and this simply opens another file and um, yeah just Gives, gives black a little bit of initiative. If knight d6, then that loses to a sweet double attack. The queen attacks the knight and the rook. There you go. Loose pieces drop off, as Dr. Nunn once said. Queen b6. So the queen just stations itself on this excellent diagonal. So just more pressure. Two pawns down though. Is it enough for black? Rook d1. Now here's an interesting move. So having opened the c-file, well now there's no longer the possibility of castles queenside after rook d1. But uh, Maxime switches back to the e-file. Now what's going on there? What's that about? Well, okay, let me make a, a kind of a non-move for white. And I'll show you the threat. So, okay, a3, it's a nothing move. Black's idea is knight takes pawn. Queen takes knight. And then black crashes through with knight f3. And wins the queen back. So that's the threat. So that's why Jumabayev just played the queen here. And that means that after queen c3... Uh, well, the knight is protected by the rook, so that tactic sim simply wouldn't work. So Vashi Le Grave came back with the rook to attack the queen, which came back to d2, and that was attacked again, and we're drifting towards a draw. Now, clearly, by this stage, Maxime realised that a draw would be just fine um, if white were to play queen d2 here, that would repeat the position for the third time, a draw. But Jumabayev now got ambitious and he declined to repeat the position and played on with queen a3. Now that takes great guts. Jumabayev rated 2605, 
Maxime vachier -Le Grave rated 2780. But he's not afraid of his opponent, but maybe he should have been. Rook c2 was the answer. Um, obviously, if that rook is taken, then the queen swoops down to take the rook here. And now white's best is, is b4 here, but actually, well, you know, if you feed this into a computer, the computer kind of says roughly level. But black now has a very dangerous initiative, and, and I think queen a3 with hindsight was just handed black too much play. Jumabai have played f4, and here is where things really turn ugly. Rook takes pawn, and, and if pawn takes knight, pawn takes pawn, and, and black is going to recover the piece because of this pin again. Jumabai have played knight f1, but, well, that, I'm afraid, led to disaster after this move. I mean, maybe he'd overlooked that queen takes bishop could be met by queen b4 check, followed by queen takes knight in the middle. So after knight e4, he took the knight on e5. Pawn takes pawn, so he's going to get the, the piece back. Um, if queen takes bishop again, this check is fatal. So knight g3, and now that was the final move of the game. Um, yeah, our friend from Kazakhstan decided that enough was enough, and he resigned here. I mean, it's quite clear that black is, is breaking through to the king in the middle. If knight takes knight, then d3 is absolutely crushing, threatening rook takes bishop, as well as queen takes rook in both cases with checkmate. Well, a great game, and I feel very sorry for, for Renat Jumabayev, who played very bravely, but you also have to admire Maxime's spirit in this game as well. Um, really creative game. So that means after six rounds, there are actually six players in the lead. We have in the next round, Maxime Vachelagrave playing against Arkady Nidic. Hikaru Nakamura playing Jeffrey Siong. Now, I can't wait for that game. That will be really tense. I know that Hikaru um, likes to kind of keep above his American um, rivals. Um, so, you know, playing a much younger player like Jeffrey, that's going to be very interesting. And then we have Wang Hao will be playing against Radoslav Wojtasek. So with three rounds to go, it, the pack is really bunching. Um, we could be in for a photo finish. So do check out my uh, report from tomorrow. For, and um, if you want to see the playlist, then you'll find that above there. And if you're not a subscriber, then do click on the button below. Thanks very much for watching.